Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. In this extension folder we'll add a new class and this will be Document Snapshot Extensions. So we'll name it Document Snapshot Extensions. Extension classes have to be static so let's make it static. Let's get rid of the constructor and then in here we need to make a method that will convert the document snapshot into type T. So we'll just say public static T as the return type. And then we can just say convert and it'll take in a typed parameter of T. And then we can just say this document snapshot. And then you can use a quick fix to import the using and we'll just call this doc is fine. And then in here we want a C sharp dictionary. So var dict equals new dictionary. And then you can use a quick fix to import the using. And then once you get system collections generic, we'll use string for the key type and object for the value type. And then we'll go ahead and get the NS dictionary of the document. And so that'll be var doc dictionary equals doc.data. And that'll give us an NS dictionary. And so then we can go through each of the keys. So we can just say for each var key in doc data dot keys and then we can check the type of the value so we can say var val equals doc dict for that key and then we can say if val is an ns string which would be ideal and we'll just say string so we'll say dict and key dot to string and we can set that to str dot to string and that is the simplest and most ideal. Otherwise, if, so else if, val is ns number, this one's a little more complicated, so we'll just say num. Then we need to check if that number has a decimal. And we can do that by saying var num string equals num dot to string. And then we can check if num string dot contains, and we'll just check to see if it contains a period. And if it does, then we'll just set dict and same thing, key dot to string. And we'll set that equal to num dot double value. And that's because it has a decimal. Otherwise, if it doesn't have that period, then we can just safely assume it's an integer or a Boolean. So we can say key to string and we can say num dot int value. And so it'll be int 32 value and that'll parse nicely to a boolean as well so that's good the other thing we need is a timestamp so we can say else if val is timestamp which comes from firebase and we can just call this time it's fine and if it does we need an ns date formatter so we can say var formatter equals new ns date formatter we can set its format by saying formatter dot date format equals and then we can set a string and so we'll use the four digit year, the two digit month, the two digit day. We'll put a T in the middle surrounded by single quotes. And then we'll use hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. One thing we should make sure we do is use two capital H's because that'll put it in the 24 hour format. And then we don't have to use AM or PM and I'm using five digits for the milliseconds. And then we can go ahead and use a semicolon. Now that we have that date format set, we can set the dict and that'll be key to string. And we can set that to a date time dot parse. And this will take in the formatter dot to string. And this will take in a date. And this date will be the time dot date value. So this parses strings, numbers, booleans, and timestamps or dates. And so that works all the way on iOS. Now we need to be able to consume this. So back in our base repository, we'll make sure we use this convert. So we can say tcs.triset result. And this will be snapshot.convert. And this will take in T because that's passed into the repository. And then we need to use a quick fix to import extensions and that should be good there. The next thing we need to do is head over to our test data repository and we need to extend from our base repository and we'll go ahead and pass in 
the model for test data, which we haven't created yet, but let's go ahead and say test data. And then let's head over to models and create that model. So add new class, and this will be test data. And then we got to make sure test data implements I identifiable. And then we can use a quick fix to implement the interface. And instead of it throwing this not implemented exception, we'll just simply do a get set here. We'll get rid of the constructor and then we'll head over to Firebase console to see what we have to add. And we need to add an int for age, a double for amount. So let's go ahead and add those. So we need public int age, and this will be get set as well. And then we need public double amount, and that will be get set. And again, this is just sample data. So we're going to end up deleting this class, but this is just a proof of concept to make sure we can connect to Firebase. The next thing we need is a Boolean for flag, string for name, and a date time for some date. So back in our project, we can make our Boolean public bool flag, and this will be get set. We need the string for name, and that will be get set as well. And then we need that date time. And this date time will be called sometime, and we'll just use get set again. And so that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we head back over here, we'll see that we have one, two, three, four, five. And so ID is the sixth, and that works out great. So now let's make sure we can use this repository. And we can use this repository by going over to the page model locator and registering this I repository. So if we head over beneath the other service registrations, we can go under the mock work service and say container.register. And this will be dependency service dot get, and this will take in the I repository. And this I repository will be a test data model. Then we can use quick fix for the services and quick fix for the models. And that'll bring that in. The last thing we need to do is make sure our test data repository can handle everything we need it to do. So let's go ahead and use a quick fix on the model, use another quick fix on the document path and so this document path will have to update but we also need to declare this as a dependency so we can go above the namespace and say assembly dependency we can use a quick fix on xamarin forms make sure you use xamarin forms and this will be type of and we can just copy the repository name and paste it into the type of and then use a quick fix for the namespace now that we have that in we can get rid of this constructor we don't need it and document path will be a little tricky because we need to go into users. So let's say users. And then we need to get the Firebase auth. So firebase.auth.auth dot default instance dot current user dot UID. And then we also need test is what we called the collection. So let's go ahead and drop this down so it's easier to see. And so basically we're going into the collection this way for the document we're saying collections user document user id collection test and then it's up to the base repository to get the document based on the id we pass in so now we need to head over to the firebase console and we need to get a copy of this id so let's go so let's go ahead and copy the id for the collection that we created which only has one item and let's copy the document id of the item in that test collection and we'll head back to our project. We'll go to the time clock page model. And instead of user, we can delete var user equals await account service, as well as the check for user. And we could say bar item equals await. And we'll just call directly to page model locator. We'll resolve our I repository. And this will be a typed parameter of test data. And then we'll use a quick fix to bring in namespace and then we can just simply call get and we need to provide an ID and this is where we'll paste in the ID we copied and then we'll do the same thing we did for user we'll say if item is equal to null we'll put a breakpoint on item and we'll make sure that the data from item comes in based on our repository and abstraction before we run our app we need to head over to the extensions and actually return that dictionary that we're creating so let's go back to our extensions in the convert method, after we populate this dictionary, we can use Newtonsoft JSON to 
serialize and then deserialize into the type. So let's right click our iOS project, go to manage NuGet packages, and we'll add newtonsoft.json. So latest version is fine, click add package. Once it's added, we'll go under the for each and we can get the JSON. So we'll just say tjson equals newtonsoft.json dot json convert and then we can say serialize object which will turn it into a string and so we're going to take the object of that dictionary so we'll just say dict that'll serialize that dictionary into a string it'll set it to tjson and now we can return newtonsoft dot json dot json convert dot deserialize object we'll provide a typed parameter of type t and we'll provide that json that we just created and this will turn that JSON string into the object type that we are expecting. So this will return something and now we can press run to test our app. Before we continue, we'll need to add some rules to our database. So let's head over to the console and then we'll click database and we'll go to rules. And we need to make a rule for access to collections within the user collection. So let's match, and this will be for users. And again, we want to make sure the user ID matches the user themselves. And then we'll go into our test collection, and then we can just match any document in there. So we'll just say document equals star star. And so in here, let's go ahead and just copy the same rule condition. And that'll just say allow read write to any document within the test co sub collection. And that'll just say allow any read or write within the test sub collection of the user's collection that matches the ID of the signed in user. So let's go ahead and test this. So we'll go to rules playground and we'll say users of Firebase user ID is two and the test collection. Then let's just say the document in the test collection is 10. If we try to run it and you're not signed in, you cannot get in. If you authenticate and you have the wrong user ID, so we'll just say something like one, two, three, you cannot get in. If you log in with the correct user, so users two, so Firebase UID is two, and we press run, now it works. So it allows the read. So that's perfect. So we'll publish this rule and we'll head back over to our app and we'll try to run it. So let's press run. We'll go ahead and sign in with our test user. And this will bring us to our breakpoint to check how our dictionary looks. And so we'll check it's got five keys. It looks like everything's being populated. So our date is populated. The name string is populated. The age integer is populated. The amount double is populated and the flag is populated. But one thing that's not populated is that ID. So let's go ahead and stop the app and populate that ID. And so this is the easiest one. We can say dict and we'll just set ID equal to doc.id. And so that's definitely the easiest property to set. So we'll run and we'll log in again and make sure we have six properties set for this specific type. So one last time, let's sign in with the email. We'll use the test user that we had in Firebase Authentication. And when we get here, we can inspect dictionary and see that it's got six properties and ID is populated. So we can just continue through this and we should land on item and we can check item to make sure it's not null and we see that it's not and we can check to make sure its properties are populated correctly and we see age is an integer and it's populated amount is a double and it's also populated flag is a boolean and it's true ID is a string and it's populated name also a string also populated but it looks like sometime did not convert properly and so let's go ahead and check why that is i think that's a good stopping point for today's video if you like the video feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave them down below in the comments section thank you for watching the xamarin forms tutorial i'm patrick and this is the let's create series